Okay, so now we're going to do our second example of the chain rule. This time we have g of x equals e raised to, let's put a parenthesis around this, this is all in the power of e. So we have two functions, we have e raised to the something, and then the something is this function here. So in a sense, this is going to be my g of x. And e to the something, e to this thing, is my f of x. And you'll recall the chain rule says you take for f of g of x, to take its derivative, we take the derivative of f, the outside or the firstmost function, with g of x unchanged times the derivative of g of x. So my outside function is e to the g of x, and e to x is derivative, as a quick review, is e to the x, doesn't change. So as we're doing this then, doing the first part here, f prime times g of x, so we'll write g prime of x equals e to the x is derivative is unchanged, and we don't change g of x either, so we're simply going to rewrite everything we have here. Three x, e, to, e to the 3x squared minus 5x, unchanged. e to the x is its own derivative, and g of x is unchanged in this part. But we're not finished. Times g prime of x. So times g of x is this, and we need to take its derivative. I'm going to delay actually doing that. Simply write times 3x squared minus 5x prime. So e to something's derivative is e to the something. However, we've ignored g of x in part of the chain rule, so we'll take it times the derivative of, of g of x. And that derivative is actually quite easy to perform, of course, using the power rule. We'll get 6x minus 5 is my answer. So e to the 3x squared minus 5x times 6x minus 5. That is g prime of x. You might see it reversed. 6x minus 5 times e to the 3x squared minus 5x. Well, multiplication is commutative, so who cares? We can reverse it if we like. And that is our second example of the chain rule for taking a calculus derivative.